All right, so uh, one of y'all had emailed me that uh, this article by the Humble Dollar, which is Jonathan Clements' website, the Humble Dollar. Um, I'd take Jonathan Clements with a grain of salt, frankly, but uh, be it as it may, this isn't Jonathan Clements. This is Richard Quinn, uh, who retired in 2010 as a uh, benefits executive. All right, there are two great debates in retirement planning, whether the 4% rule is valid and how much folks income folks need relative to their final salary to retire in comfort. I find both subjects frustrating in part because in part because there's so little consensus. I also find is he clicked on his Yeah, he's smart. See how he's clicking on his own articles? That's how you want to do it, man. Um, link it to your own articles. If you're trying to build SEO, search engine optimization, which I don't really I, I need to do it better. I just I don't. Uh, you really need to link to your own articles for SEO. All right, I participate in New Retirement's Facebook group and occasionally give my views. I recently expressed the opinion that the goal in retirement should be to replace 100% of the base income you earned immediately before retirement. I emphasize immediately before because that amount typically drives your current standard of living. Hmm. Uh, commenters, uh, commentators, commenters, commentators said my 100% replacement rate is ridiculous, but those who disagree suggest the right target should be 30% or 120% of pre-retirement income. The 30 percenters plan on moving to a farm. Most commenters support a 70% replacement rate. Okay, that seems like a passive aggressive hit on the 30 percenters, but be it as it may. Uh, paying off a mortgage lowers living expenses, I was told. These folks missed the point. Paying off that mortgage a few months before retirement is one thing, but if a couple pays off the mortgage several years before retiring, their spending has likely climbed as they took advantage of the extra money available to them each month. And I don't disagree with that. Uh, in making their case, some folks claim living expenses will decrease significantly once retired. This is from the people who are seven years from retirement. Yes, expenses may change once you retire, but they probably won't decrease. And even if they do initially, there's still inflation to consider. Okay, that's, well, I mean, when you're using words like, yes, expenses may change, but they probably, well, and then, then how can you be frustrated that there's so little consensus? I, that That right there is a lot of variables that you can never iron out you can't say this way just there's no you cannot say with any kind of positive uh viability that this will happen and as such that's why economics for instance the basic economics there's so little consensus because economics is not gravity you know what i'm saying it's just not um economics uh retirement planning is not as assuredly as the sun rises in the east uh all right but da, 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 okay all right uh, other costs like health insurance will increase. My total premiums for health insurance, including Medicare, are five times higher than when I was working. Okay, well, that's anecdotal. Um, so you're a, 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 an executive. I, I mean, who knows? They might have had a golden plan I, or the uh, Cadillac plan. I don't know, but that's anecdotal. So, but again, that's the whole point about this. We don't know until we see what you have. That's why you can't live off these rules of thumbs. It has nothing to do with you. What is your stuff? Ah, Moreover, once retired, chances are your discretionary spending will increase significantly thanks to travel, hobby, hobbies, blah, blah, blah. Um, not so sure. I actually challenge that. Uh, but uh, I mean, see, that's the thing. When I, the, I mean, maybe self selecting, the people I work with just got off the horn with the guy right now. Yeah, they just don't spend that much, man. They just don't. They're pretty casual, pretty comfortable. Their mortgage will be paid off. If you, see, that's the whole point what this guy misses too 100% of a base income. Well, this guy's mortgage is going to be paid off and his all of his debt would be paid off in five years and his expending is going to drop significantly. Yeah, I mean, we're talking you know, 5000 a month total, and that's in health care included, too. And as such, he was just fine. Man. He's going to get 5000 a month in Social Security if he waits till he's 70. So from 62 till 70, he's going to need you know about 7000 a month for the first few months, the first few years. And once his mortgage and other debts paid off 5000 bucks a month, Portfolio of the million bucks, Psh, that's a no-brainer right there. Um, other uh, people commented that moving to a lower-cost area would cut spending. If that's the plan, you want to move, fine. But if moving is a necessity to get by in retirement, that's another thing. It may mean your retirement savings can't sustain your standard of living. I agree with that. Um, uh, some folks obsessed with creating a retirement budget, uh, going into great detail about every penny that they expect to spend in retirement, Good luck with that. Certainly having a good understanding of major living expenses is important, but there's no need to stress over where every uh, penny will go. I completely agree with that. One person asked me to outline my budget. 
When I said I didn't have one, there was more criticism. How do you know what you spend? I was asked. You're kidding, right? I can tell you exactly how much I spend. Uh, I spend an equal amount of my net monthly pension and social See, and he also has a pension too. So, um, I, look, I, I, I got no qualm with any of this right here. I'm just saying at the end of the day, there's you can't you, know, you can't be frustrated with a lack of consensus on retirement planning when there is no definitive numbers in which to plug in for the, the group as a whole because everyone is so unique. You can't be frustrated with a lack of consensus on morals, on politics, on the likes of Tom Brady or not as a goat when everyone has their own emotional thoughts in this. You just can't be. I mean, a lack of consensus is, is human beings, man. But it's not a matter of what we can afford to spend. Rather, what's important is about we can't afford to spend. Otherwise known as living within our means or scarcity is what I'd argue. Once you know how much you can really reasonably spend, the next question is where does that money come from? I completely agree. Once you know how much the uh, is this right here. Once you know how much you can reason don't. Once you know how much the money you can reasonably spend, I'd actually say once you know how much it costs in your retirement. Then the question comes, where does the money come from? Not how much you can reasonably spend, uh -uh. how much you need, i.e. for the things you want to do and the things that you can't not, not do, i.e. can't pay your health insurance, you cannot pay your property taxes, things of that nature. But you're also going to want to do stuff too. How much do these things cost? 6000 bucks a month? And then where does the money come? I recently saw a Zoom discussion about retirement planning. The expert said to avoid this 4% rule at all costs. His reasoning, if you take just 4%, there'd be a lot of money left over and you'd be needlessly deprived. How does he know that 4% means depriving yourself? What, When he doesn't know your desired lifestyle or how big a portfolio that 4% is coming from. A talk show advisor expressed a similar view. Spend it down, knowing that you earn the money, not your kids. But spend it down by what age? His crystal ball must be a hell of a lot better than mine. Allow me one of my favorite words, balderdash. Um or malarkey as Joe Biden. Remember Joe Biden, his first campaign slogan, no malarkey. And people are like, dude, can you be any older? Use your retirement money to maintain your lifestyle, including other things that don't count as necessities. Don't deprive yourself out of guilt. If it makes you happy, plan on leaving money to your children or to your favorite charities. Make sure your plans provide financially for a surviving spouse. Uh, try not to be a financial burden. If the 4% rule doesn't give you enough to live on, you either need to save more during your working years or withdraw more than this rule specifies. And the latter means there's a risk you run out of money. Oh, my goodness. So, see, this one drives me crazy. The implications, the 4% means that uh, there is no risk of running out of money. That, oh. And if the 4% has a risk of running out of money, which it does, then the 4% rule is simply null and void. I, why do... If the 4% rule means you, it doesn't give you enough to live on, uh, you can withdraw more than the rule specifies, but the latter, i.e. not living by the 4% rule, means there is a risk that you'll run out of money. I just, oh. <laughs> it isn't that complicated. That's what this guy says. Well, the, uh, so I'll just keep going. Use the 4% rule to estimate how big of a portfolio you need. How? Take your base by butt up. All right, uh, tell the experts to give to go live their own life or whatever. So here's what I said. Let's see if the comment said right here. Why should you avoid the 4% rule? Many, many reasons, but the first that comes to mind is yield on 10-year treasury as we speak is 1.094. When what, what was the yield when banking came up and said rule is, is 5%. And as such, end of discussion, literally, literally, there is the 4% rule inherently is a, is balderdash. Doesn't mean it's evil, doesn't mean it's bad, it's based on numbers that can no longer be extrapolated to today. I don't get why people are so, I, I just, it's the weird, it's like they want the simplicity. If we just had the experts tell us how to not use CO2 while the experts are flying around planes. If we just had the experts, you know, my man, Jason, it's like if we just had experts, you know, every now and again, how the technocrats and the experts tell us how to manage the economy. I'm like, dude, what is it with this need to have like this, these rule based things when it comes to human beings, man, I don't get it. It's crazy. 4% rule. Well, it worked 30 years ago. Uh, what was that? I don't know, 30 years ago now, about 25 years ago. So it's got to work today. It's just, it's like the Phillips curve in econ economics. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, not a bad article. I'll link to the show. Let's see ya.